Hi. So, uh, I made this thing recently. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there might recognize it. Uh, I called it Camping on the Argonath, and it's uh, heavily inspired by the works of uh, John Howe and Alan Lee, who are sort of the uh, preeminent uh, Tolkien artists and also the uh, conceptual designers on uh, the Lord of the Rings films. And it was very much inspired by their work. And I made it all inside Blender, and I was thinking about how I could maybe make a video about you know, I, 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 I thought a tutorial probably wouldn't be the best way to cover it because, frankly, I was not very smart when I made this and my methods are <laughs> are not to be copied. Um, I got there in the end, I think it looks good, but I, I don't think I, I did it in the smartest way. So I'm, I'm not going to do a straight tutorial, but what I thought I could do and what I thought was sort of interesting was I was looking back at... I, I finished it a few months ago and I was looking back at the, um, at the end of each day as I was working on it. It took about I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 days, and at the end of each day I would I would render out what I had done that day. And, and so I have this collection of renders um, as the project went along. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at each of those and sort of talk about what I had done each day and, and how the process was sort of coming together, because it's sort of easy to look at something like this and think that it comes out fully formed, you know, that you just have this idea and you sit down at your computer and just make it and it's perfect, but... <laughs> As you'll see if you stick around, um, the process is kind of surprising as to how it actually came together, and I think there's a lot to be learned from it. So, um, so yeah, let's let's jump into it. So the first render is this one. So this is probably a day of work. Um, you can see I've got the very basic setup done. It looks quite different from the final version, but um, for only a day of work, it's not bad. I actually quite like this. I think it's a nice composition, it's a nice frame. I like looking down the arm of the Argonath like this. It was important for this piece that I wanted it to feel... The two words I had were dangerous and cozy. I wanted to sort of juxtapose those two ideas against each other. On the one hand, you've got this incredibly tall statue with this really steep drop. And then on the other hand, you've got this cozy little campfire. And, and I wanted to kind of mix those two things together. So. Here, I think you get the danger of it. I think it feels tall. It feels, I think you can feel that sort of overhang of the arm and that's really nice. Uh, I think the valley looks good. Uh, that was, I made that using just, I did it in a stupid way. I just made a plane, I subdivided it and then I used the uh, proportional editing tool to just pull bits up and get this sort of natural, sort of lumpy, imperfect um, landscape, but Speaking of landscapes, the better way to do it would have been to actually use the landscape add-on that Blender has that I didn't know about, but I'm pretty sure there's a valley preset in there that you can just you can just click a button and it adds in a, a beautiful valley that probably looks way better than this. Um, but you know, for for the purpose of this, it being out of focus and in the dark, it looks great. And uh, I like the water as well. I think the the water is just a simple trick. It's just a, a glass, a, just a plane with a glass material on it, and then I put a. Uh, a Musgrave texture on it to just give it that bump, um, and then I just turn the scale way down, and it and it, it's a it's kind of a classic trick to make water really easily. And so yeah, so for a first render, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this. Um, but I can remember looking at this what my issue was and what I tried to fix in the next one, which is I was worried that the statue itself wasn't very distinct, that it sort of blends into the background a little bit. And so if you look at this frame, it's actually interesting because the left. The left half of it, the left 50%, is uh, is actually really nice to look at, but the right half of it is just nothing. There's there's literally nothing to look at, and in fact, the statue just fully blends into the background. Um, and I think I was also worried at the time, wrongly, but I think I was worried that the statue didn't feel tall enough. And I think the reason I felt that was because the hand itself um, is below the ridge of the of the hills, and I felt that that just made it feel less imposing. So. I, that's what I wanted to fix in the next version. Um, I wanted the statue to feel taller and I wanted it to also feel more distinct. And to be honest, that was a battle I was fighting the whole way through this project. But um, so another day of work went by and then we ended up with this. And so immediately I think this looks a lot worse than the previous one. Um, you can see I've raised the statue up, first of all. That's the first thing that strikes me about this. So now the hand and the head are actually breaking the horizon line, which to be fair does make it feel taller. Um, however, I think it's too tall now. I don't believe that that's actually standing on the riverbanks. And I think if you were to zoom out, you'd actually find that it isn't. I think it's actually just floating above the river, um, which isn't good. You can also see that I've added in the light from the campfire. Um, 
just to help because that is the central focus of the frame so it's kind of hard to know what you're doing if that's not there so uh, that's just a little thing that i added in there you can see i've changed the previous one didn't really have any lighting in it it's just sort of a hdri that i added in this one has got a sunset which was an idea i tried i like it in theory the sunset and the distance um but ultimately I, I i don't think it's very nice and again i may have solved the problem here of making the statue tall but i haven't solved the problem of it being indistinct in fact this one might even be less distinct than the previous one i think it really blends into the hillside this time but you can see i've tried to fix that with a good trick which i actually do use in the final version but it's too intense here and it doesn't really make sense which as you can see on the hand i've sort of added this edge light that is helpful in separating it from the hillside but it doesn't really make any sense because it's meant to be moonlight clearly but because i've added this sunset thing in it's just all these ideas are getting sort of muddied and you can also see that i have for some reason i've reshaped the river um which doesn't work it doesn't look good now it looks like kind of a dead end to me or like a sharp turn which doesn't make sense i don't know why i did that and it doesn't look good so um i think this is <laughs> I think this is significantly worse than the first version, um, but at least I know what I need to fix. I need to make the statue more distinct, I need to fix the river, I need to work out something with the lighting because I don't think that sunset thing is working. So let's see what we get next. So this is number three. Okay, so worse again. I think this is uh, terrible. <laughs> I think this looks horrible. So um, you can see What's the first thing to talk about? Uh, you can see it fixed the river, to be fair, it looks better. Uh, and I actually think that's pretty close to what it looks like in the final version. I like that it sort of strays off to the left and it sort of implies the river uh, off the edge of the frame. Um, you can see I've added in trees, obviously, which are just a particle system on the hillside. And then a tree made using a Blender's tree generator thing. Um, I've still got the sunset in there, so I'm still trying to make that work, but I don't think it is working. One thing that I do like here is that on the very right side of the statue, you can see I've added it again. I've used the same technique, but on a different place, uh, that edge light on the side of the helmet to separate the statue from the background. But again, it doesn't make sense because it's meant to be moonlight and the sun setting. It just, it just doesn't work. Uh, and looking at the sunset thing now, I didn't realize this at the time, but I think part of why I don't like it is because it actually takes away from the idea of the coziness um, of the campfire. It, 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 you want that you want this f you want this to feel really cold and really dangerous and then just for there to be this one spot of warmth in the middle of the frame and having the sun set off in the distance doesn't make it feel that it sort of just it warms the whole frame um, and so I, I don't think that's working and um, so ultimately i think this is quite ugly i also think there's a problem with the river it's it doesn't appear to be reflecting the water doesn't appear to be reflecting like i don't i actually don't know what happened there i think i, I must have removed the musgrave thing for some reason so um it makes everything look fake because there's no reflections of the hills and the water so again i think this is worse than the previous version but we know what we have to fix so let's see what we do with another day's work and this uh looks like shit. <laughs> this looks really bad oh my days that looks like a that does not look good wow okay so you can see i've I'm giving up on the sunset slowly, the sun is slowly setting um, because I know what I'm trying to do here. So I'm still struggling with it, the statue does not feel distinct, it doesn't feel like it's standing out from the background. So I decide to use a different tactic here, which is a sort of classic thing in, uh, in film lighting uh, for night exteriors, is using backlight. So instead of lighting the subject, which isn't very realistic for you know a night exterior there's not really a lot of ambient light you can always get you, you can often get away with it if you light the background and you have the subject in silhouette so you can see i've just blasted moonlight what's meant to be moonlight at those hills so that the hills are actually brighter than the statue um which is a good idea in theory it doesn't work here because that same moonlight is also hitting the statue so now everything's just gotten brighter um and so now the frame is very flat. There's not really a lot of, uh, there's not really a great use of shadow. <laughs> it's just light. Uh, you can see everything and uh, it doesn't look good. You can also see this awful texture I've added to the hillside, which just doesn't work. Um, and also something's happened to the trees. I know I seem to have lost a significant amount of trees. Um, 
and yeah it's just horrible and i think i think this is probably the one where i realized that the sunset just isn't working because now i've got moonlight coming in from the side of the frame and then i've got the sunset at the back of the frame which implies that the sun and the moon are right next to each other which doesn't which isn't good <laughs> which doesn't make sense um and is not only does it not make sense but it's also very ugly so uh yeah this is i i hope this is the worst one but i i actually think it gets worse again so let's have a look <laughs> oh god i haven't actually that's so bad that's so bad wow i must have been in a real bad mood when i finished working on that jesus hit render and i probably just went straight to bed um okay so this obviously looks awful i've given up on the sunset and actually i can tell now well, first of all, the first thing to say is I've tried another method of separating the statue from the background, which is just to make the background out of focus. Um, which, to be fair, it does work. The statue is very separated. But the problem with this is, uh, one, it's just ugly, it's just boring, um, but it also makes the statue look like a miniature. To me, this actually feels really small. And that's because uh, when, you, when, when they shoot miniatures for films, often they have to shoot on much longer lenses. When you scale down your subject, you have to scale up the focal length to to adjust for it. And when you scale up the focal length, you know, when you're shooting on a longer lens, things go out of focus easier. So this is very characteristic to me of, of a miniature. And so I just think this immediately looks really small. And because it's so bright, it also sort of now looks like it's made of styrofoam or something. You can actually see that brick texture that I've used on the statue is, uh, you can just see it's like a flat texture, like the bricks don't have any um the bricks don't have any sort of they're just like a 2d thing slapped onto the model so yeah it's just gotten brighter and brighter for something that <laughs> should be quite dark this just looks awful the other thing you can see i i've done is is i think what i'm trying to do now is is i had the idea to try and match the aesthetic of the lord of the rings films where they do this beautiful thing with with night scenes occasionally where they'll they don't do it all the time which is interesting but every now and again they do these night scenes where the sky where everything's just blue it's not realistic but it so like if you look at the sky you can actually see like detail in it it's not just black with with stars it's actually blue it looks kind of like this but like they do it well and this is appalling um and again everything's just way too bright here so i'm trying to match the aesthetic of of the films but that's just silly and the one thing i'll say about this is the water's reflecting again <laughs> which is helpful it's out of focus so you can't really see it but it is reflecting the hills which is which is good um is there anything good to say about this one let's have a look at my notes no <laughs> no there's not uh my, my note says as bad as it gets so i'm expecting the next one to be slightly better uh, let's have a look this is number six okay so it's kind of it is it is better than the last one to be fair to be fair that that is better um you know what this is the first one where i think the statue is actually kind of nicely separated i think the statue is i think i found a good balance there the hills look awful i don't know what that's about i think i applied a new texture to them and tried something else but they just look that doesn't look like stone and it also doesn't look like dirt or grass or anything i don't know what that's meant to be um, you can see I've toned down the, the sky. Uh, so the sky is just done using a HDRI, which is a 360, you know, image that's lighting the scene from every angle. And for the previous one, I probably had it turned up quite a lot. And then for this, I've just turned it way down, which is much more realistic. Um, and then you can see I've also started to add in the campfire, because I think at this point I'm getting frustrated that I'm trying to make this image, but the focal point of the scene actually isn't there. All I have is this light. So I've decided to actually try and add in the fire. And you can see I've also added in what I think is a sort of uh, sort of a, a bed area um, in this little sort of cave in the back of the hand. Um, and I actually think the statue looks good. I think the texture of the statue looks good. What I've done, I think, is added in a bump map using the values from the original texture. And so that's just giving a lot of 3D variation. So earlier when I said that the texture just looked like a 2D thing that was slapped onto the object, now I think there's lots, there's all these little micro you know, it looks like rock, it looks like all these little bumps all over it, which is done using a bump map, so that makes sense. And I think it looks really good, I think it looks really realistic. You can see still that edge light on the on the side of the helmet and the shoulder. It really helps in, in separating it, and it actually works now because 
Well, it actually doesn't make sense because the moon is meant to be on the other side of the scene, but that's fine. That's like a movie thing of, you know, it's just this hint of moonlight off to the side that's so subtle you wouldn't even notice it. Um, so to be fair, I think this is the first time that this has looked better than the previous render. It doesn't look good, but it's starting to get there. And I think what I do next is I decide to actually color grade this image. So I don't re-render, I don't do any more work on the, on the actual scene, but I take it into my compositor and I color grade it to just try and get a sense of what the final image is going to look like. And so the once we've had the color graded version, that looks something like this. And so I actually think that looks okay. I'm not, uh, you know, I wouldn't, it's not finished or it's not even close really, but the fire looks like fire. <laughs> and you get this, you sort of are starting to get the sense of the coziness versus the dangerous thing that I was talking about earlier. It feels like a cold, dark, wet night and then you have this one little pocket of warmth and uh, it's quite nice and also you can see that I'm starting to lean into this thing that's happening in the river where the moon is being reflected in the water which was just a happy accident I didn't intend that but it's actually really nice and then I've added in sort of a little light just off the top of the frame to sort of indicate where the moon is um, and so yeah I think this looks good again this is sort of that thing I was talking about where the Lord of the Rings films they have this sort of blue nighttime aesthetic. I think I've pushed it too far here, but it's it's getting there. So there's there's hope. <laughs> there's hope for it after all. I was very close to giving up, I'm sure, after that number five looked awful, but this is starting to look okay. Um, so let's see what happens next. Okay, so I actually think this one looks really good. So you can see now that I'm getting excited about the actual focal points. So I've gone back in and I've worked on that more. I've adjusted the firelight so it sort of spreads more, it's, it's a much softer light instead of just being in that little pocket, it now spreads all over the hand. And I've also built out this little campfire area and added in uh, a bow, which is comically small, that looks like a child's bow, I don't know why I didn't realize that. Um, but this actually looks good, I like the lighting on the hills in the background, I think it's really subtle and really soft, and it's the first time that the hills have actually looked good. Um, and I'm actually quite happy with that. Now, so I think what I do here is I do the same thing again, is I, I put it back into the color grade and I color grade it again to see what it looks like, and that looks like this. And so that's actually, I think that's, I think it's fairly good. It's a good result. It's not finished, but we're getting there again. Uh, you can see the big thing I've changed is I've added in the moon. So I do that in the composite because I don't want to, I don't want to try to put a moon in the background of the scene in Blender. That just seems like a huge headache. So I just found a picture of a moon online and masked it out and, uh, popped it in the back there. So now I, what I like about this is there's this nice triangular composition of like I think your eye immediately goes to the hand because it's the brightest part of the frame and Then maybe it goes down to the water and you realize that oh, that's that river that you know If you know Lord of the Rings you, you remember the scene of them sailing down the river and then up to the moon and and it's just What's good about this and what's interesting about making a still render is you want to have filled the frame with enough things that people can stay. So I'm saying like, you know, I'm not putting this in a museum. It is just going on online on, on social media. So you want to make sure people stop scrolling and stop to look at your image. But once you have that, you want to make sure that they can stay and that there actually is, that it is rewarding to, to look at the image for longer. And I think this more than any of the previous renders does have that quality. I think if you zoom in and sort of look around the frame, there is things to observe. And that's good, and that's really now we're at the point where we just want to keep expanding on that and just keep adding in detail so that people can, can re so that it's rewarding to actually stay and look at the image so that it's not just, it's not just this wide frame that what, there's actually detail for you to sort of investigate. Um, and I think this one is the first one that kind of has that. I think this would, I think this would hold your attention for about 15 seconds, <laughs> which maybe want a little bit longer than that, but it's, I'll take 15 seconds for now. I think number five would hold your attention for about 0.3 seconds before you'd scroll past it. Um, but this is good. So at this point now, I'm starting to think about what the final image is going to look like. And one of the things I decided to change or experiment with changing is uh, to change the aspect ratio. So if you look at this one, there is a lot of sort of dead space. I would describe it as on the edges of the frame where there's just nothing happening. As I said, like you want to, you want to, Give thing, you want to give people things to look at and really on the edges of the frame here there's just nothing to look at. Um, so I did experiment with narrowing the frame and as you'll remember the, the final image is a, is a portrait uh, 
composition and these have all been landscapes. So this is the first time I sort of get an inclination to, to narrow it in. And that looks like this. And so the, there's some of the minor changes there, but that one's the big one to me. And I think it's a good instinct. I do think that this is kind of just an ugly aspect ratio. It's it just, it doesn't fit right. You know, you also have to remember that I, th I think when you're making something like this, you have to remember that people are going to be looking at on their screens. And with all the other ones, they they fill a monitor 16 by 9. You know, it looks nice. And this one just looks a little awkward to me. So I don't think I stick with it for too long. And another thing I'm feeling with these ones is that they just feel over-processed. I think I was trying to go for a film as if these were taken on 35 millimeter film or something, um, which is, I don't know, it's an interesting idea, but... You know, I like the idea of mythical or um, fictional places being photographed on film. That's kind of in like like it was someone like you know the travel camera in in Middle Earth. But um, I don't like it. I don't I don't like the look of it. I think the 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 campfire area is just too overexposed. And same with the moon. And uh, I yeah, I think I think the whole thing is actually too bright. Maybe I I don't know. I think the highlights are too bright on this image. And so the next one, I, I focus a little bit on on toning that down. Um, and that looks something like this. So, this is actually, uh, this was the final version, which is interesting. So, I couldn't sort of see anything else to fix. So, I rendered this out and I, I shared it around and nobody was that interested in it. I thought it was nice and some people, you know, some people had nice words to say about it. But in my mind, it was, it was finished. Um, and so I thought this was done, I walked away, and only recently did I come back and look at it. And it occurred to me for the first time that I had the composition wrong. And it's kind of obvious to me looking at it now that this should have always been a vertical composition. What I think I thought I was doing was making a landscape, um, sort of digital painting of a landscape that featured a statue in it. But actually, if you look at it, what it really is is a portrait of a statue. Um, and the landscape is not the important thing. And I think the landscape takes up too much of the frame when, in reality, the interesting thing about this is the statue and the campfire. And to even push it further, if you want to make it feel dangerous, you want to imply the, the height of the statue. And I think, that's the big, I think that's the big problem with all of these. And that was only like a week ago, so I came back, um, I reopened Blender, and I exported this version. And I recolor graded it. I think I did a much better job on the color grade. I, I let go of the idea of trying to make it look like the films. I just tried to look at it as make it its own thing. Uh, I think it's much more subtle. I think it's much more beautiful. I really like the sort of teal color of the, of the night as opposed to just being fully just blue. Um, I also rendered it in 2K as opposed to 1080, which really speaks to the thing of being able to zoom in and look around the frame. And the 1080 version, if you zoom in, you're just losing quality. With the 2K, it's it's a lot more. Uh, there's a you can get a lot closer before you start losing quality. I probably should have done it in 4K, but you know there's not there's not that much detail. Um, once you once, the more resolution I put in, the easier it is to see all my mistakes. So 2K was a good uh, compromise. Um, and I think I think the vertical frame is really what makes this. To me, that's just a much nicer composition. And I think people agreed because I I, I shared it again. Um, and it, and it got much more attention this time, particularly on the um, Lord of the Rings subreddit. I shared it there, and it and it did. You know, I think it's my my best post. I mean, who cares? But like, <laughs> what I really was happy about was the conversation. A lot of people um, commented to to you know share their thoughts and ask questions, and and uh, people seemed to be really interested in it. Um, and so it was. I think it was, I think this was a really good lesson. I love, I, I'm, I'm going to do this every time now on a project, is just rendering out versions, you know, to be able to see, to be able to see the sort of logic of it present itself as it goes along. I think it's an important part of making things like this is to sort of listen to what it's telling you it should be, you know, and the big revelation of that was the vertical frame at the end. And looking back, it's so obvious that it was, that it should have been vertical all along, but it, it just didn't occur to me until I had that, until I could step away. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I I learned a lot from this little project. I just did it for fun. It was a personal project, you know. I didn't. I don't get anything from it, but um, I think there was some good lessons, and uh, and yeah, I, I hope it was interesting to see how you know this came together, and, and maybe you can hopefully take some lessons from it yourself. And 
And so, yeah, maybe I'll make uh, more videos like this. I kind of like the idea of, of not being so technical about, you know, the how and why and, and just looking more at the creative process in its in its various stages. Um, so I might I might do something like this again if 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 it would be interesting for anyone to watch. Who knows? Um, but but if you did watch it, thank you and uh, yeah, have a good one. Thanks. Bye.